Really, I've always been very restless. I've always wanted to make things happen. I've always been very determined in saying I'm going to build a story. I would like my children to one day look back on the country's history and be proud of having built something. To be an entrepreneur is to create jobs, to generate wealth for the country, to make something happen, to make a difference in the market, to have a business that is really admired by others, in the way they conduct themselves, in the way they behave, be it appreciation of the service as I've done, be it production of anything, business that I've already entered in my life, but I've always been very determined in relation to this goal. So I knew that somewhere I was going to go. I just didn't know where and nobody as a young person can imagine where he could go. But I observed a lot. I used great entrepreneurs. Great entrepreneurs as a benchmark. This is very important. I think young people have to have a reference to base themselves on. It is the experience of others that you haven't lived yet that can illuminate your path that can give you an idea and open your vision. What I consider one of the most important strengths of human beings is seeing something that the other is not seeing and seeing oneself within that context. So to answer your question more objectively is, yes, I saw myself somewhere very big in the future and I wanted to be there. I'm not going to spend this life being mediocre or just another one. I'm going to try to be someone special and for that I dedicated myself a lot. Fear and insecurity are intrinsic to human beings. It is natural. People are afraid when they are at a height and look down and feel a chill in their spine. We are afraid when we are going to face a project and we don't know what could happen. Insecurity is natural. It's supernatural. To get into something new. To leave the comfort zone. All these aspects and all these sensations generate fear and insecurity. Whoever says, but it could be Warren Buffett. It could be Steve Jobs, it could be Bill Gates, you, me, anyone who is watching us now, says that he has never had insecurity or fear in any situation. Now how are you going to face your fear? Courage was defined among the 500 largest companies in the world as one of the most important items in its success. The courage to invest, the courage to believe, the courage to face crises, the courage to be creative, to never give up, to have that determination. All of this is part of the definition of success. So, yes, I was afraid several times. Yes, I was insecure. But I managed to largely overcome it by making things happen and not failing to do them. And making mistakes and stumbling and getting up and stumbling and getting up. A good executive, the good businessman succeeds more than he fails. But he will also make mistakes. I started with my father at the age of 18. In the company he had a construction company at the time. When he sold it. And I started in advertising at the age of 25. At the time I was thinking what I was going to do. My ex-partner had an office. My ex-partner is half a cousin of mine. No. He is a cousin of my brother-in-law. Who was Fisher. I don't know if you remember. Remember Fisher? And we. We formed a partnership for 17 years. Then we had a disagreement. We had a strong disagreement. I left in 98. I set up a new company from scratch, called the Newcomb Group. I created Newcomb. I invented this name, in four years, in 2002. It was already market leader. It was the biggest growth in the history of advertising in Latin America. There is nothing like it. I went from zero to first place in the ranking in four years, after having a successful operation with my partner. I even wrote a book, my first. I wrote two books, my first book which was Construindo Uma Vida, it was my business biography. And there's a quote from him at the time, because we didn't even agree on how much he was going to pay me for me to leave. The company was worth more than he ended up paying me. The last sentence I heard from him, when I said, I'd rather be paid less and be free to do it my way, than be with you, so I'll leave and be paid less. Even getting less. Then he said, I'm going to destroy you in the market, because it's only the market that knows what happened to his company. The market knows what happened to my company, but I don't take any pleasure in saying that, right? I don't wish that on anyone. I didn't want to destroy him. I wanted him to be happy in his space, in his own way. You can wish harm to others. These are the worst feelings a human being can have. Your ambition is valid, as long as it's not that ambition that will override everything. I never in my life wanted to step over anyone, pull anyone's rug, not trample anyone. And look what I had the opportunity to do business and I didn't want to do it that way. I joke that in Brazil being honest is not difficult because the competition is small. I gave some lectures that now I'm a little tired of doing. She called seven forces that lead you to success. One of the strengths, I had to include the strength of character. If I lived in Switzerland and had a Swiss education, or eventually even an American one, I would say this, I wouldn't have seven strengths from my lecture if I were a Swiss, an American, or a German. 
because for them strength of character is one thing intrinsic in them. Brazilian people is one thing, we are a good-natured people, but we are a very smart people, in a lot of senses. What did I do, just so you understand, where am I most efficient? First to stop is the worst thing in the world. I could eventually, financially, settle down and stop, because I had already achieved all my financial goals, etc. But stop. Life is like riding a bicycle. You stop pedaling, you fall. And the truth is, if you don't have more, you're not more productive. If you're not doing things, what's the fun in life? I always say, you stay on vacation your whole life. What fun is that? It might even go down, but... No, decrease. Okay. And it's up to you to take a stand, which would be work. If there weren't vacations, it would be vacations, if there weren't work. The fun of vacation is until you are tired and want to rest. So the idea here was, where am I most useful? I joke that manpower is in the empty agenda, not the full agenda. What is an empty schedule? The one I do, I don't depend on it. Jeff Bezos is also a guy who started, again, in a smaller room than this one. In his garage. And look where the guy got to and the guy managed to dominate the planet despite the Alibabas of life and everything. And it's still the reference. What I always say to young people too, I always say it like this, be curious, want to learn, always ask why not. There's never a no answer. Why not? Everything can be done. Look at these guys as a benchmark. Benchmark in English means reference. Who are the references? For me, the references, I can believe a big part of the success of my business life. Then I had the humility to understand that I need to have references in Brazil and abroad. So who are the people I really looked up to? And why are these guys different? Do you know why? Because they have a vision. They have a vision that no one is seeing. They understand the market and the needs the market has before others. So they are ahead of their time. So few people, right? So many people like that manage to have that kind of qualification. But they are guys that we have to watch. I said, why do I want to do something? Do I want to be relevant in what I'm going to do? In everything I get involved, the ruler is high. I want to get the best possible. Fuck. Fuck. And try to do what the competitor is not doing. And he is never satisfied. Oh, but if you are never satisfied? My guys talk like this. We conquered a new account. What's next? Let's go. I can't, so I can't. Always motivated by something. And that, that drive these guys have. What did this guy need more? It doesn't stop, right? The guy is already the richest guy in the world. He already has everything he wants. So, it's not a matter of money, is it? It's a question of achievement. The guy already had Tesla, man. No, Tesla had it all. And I'm sitting another day. No, it bought Twitter. The success of an entrepreneur is in getting more right than wrong. There is no one in the world who has not made wrong decisions at certain times. That it was wrong at certain times. I think what makes me most proud is that if you had a ranking that is impossible to assess the number of hits and misses, I must be at the top of hits, you know? So, I was right much more than I was wrong in my life. I already made a mistake, I already paid for it. I made a lot of mistakes, didn't I? And that's what Michael Jordan said. It is from mistakes that we learn. Because making a mistake once is okay. Making a mistake a second time is stupid, right? But the same mistake, you can make new mistakes. You won't make the same mistake. In everything in life, in personal life, in everything. I learn a lot. I analyze a lot what I did, what I didn't do. How am I going to act from now on in new situations? Experience creates a story called repertoire. I created a good repertoire. What I am most proud of in my life is not because of this campaign or that campaign, or this business or that business. It is the repertoire that I managed to create within my lifetime. It is the work set where I can talk to you here, or a politician, or a doctor. And I will always have a repertoire to be talking to the person at a good level because he was so curious and devoured as much information as I ingested. Heritage comes and goes. It is richer, less rich. What matters is what you put in it. I tell the young man the following. It's no use being on Google on your cell phone. You go to a job interview. The guy asks you something. You look it up on Google. The answer is you're going to hire Sergey Brin. I'm on Google not you. So, it has to be in here. That the only time it goes away is either you had old age dementia or mouse hyper, or you died. That nobody else can take away what you put into your mind. For sure, your universe of information that you acquired, your culture is directly linked to the volume of your interest. If you're interested, go get it. I'm very surprised by the lack of intellectual level of many people I talk to. The futility, the nonsense, things don't get into anything, they don't take an interest in anything. Take an entrepreneur, Take a company director. I'll give you an example. The guy was handling Noni's account, which was. Then I asked him, listen, tell me, how long have you been servicing the account? Oh, I've been there for two years. That's cool. 
what is the per capita consumption of dairy products in Brazil today? He knows because he's in the... Oh yeah, so many 8 kilos, 7 kilos a year. Ah cool, and from France? What are kings? No, that I don't know. What about the world? And how much does Brazil represent? Do you have a macro view of things? Ask the guy who the Prime Minister of England does, he doesn't know. The level of information of the average Brazilian is far below what it should be. And it's not for lack of opportunity that many guys, these guys leave a university more cross than they should. The university gives you a curriculum. Your academic background depends on you. Because if you want to enjoy it, you know that it's really cool at Colegio Americano. I studied at Colegio Americano. My children also study. I think this school is spectacular. And the next one, you can decide. Carioca is better than me, for example, or more interested than me. He can do. We'll pass the year the same way. But he'll choose more. Things to do. Perfect. He will choose other subjects. He will choose what is more difficult. His mathematics. Have you write yours? Yeah. You agree with? Not everyone is the same. Perfect. We have a young man who is listening to us because I like talking to young people. Be curious. If you are curious, if you throw in information, it will help you a lot later on. It will make a difference in your life. In the old days, being an expert at something was cool. I'm an expert on this. Today, being a generalist is much more important. What you can do for yourself is to create this cool content within yourself, to inform yourself, to inform yourself, to inform yourself when it is in the academic phase, even after college, to continue learning for the rest of your life. There's an older sister of mine. I'm 69 years old. She did a fifth master's degree in her life. Nowadays, you do it at home. You don't even need it in college. Yes, at home. Exactly. Distance learning. Everything in life is done here, paid for here. Whatever you sow, you reap. Perfect. If you're dishonest, you bastard, you're going to reap trouble in the future. You are completely right. If you want to be healthy, young people can put a lot of things into their bodies. It can handle cigarettes. It can handle alcoholic beverages. It can handle drugs, because the body is still young and can handle it. It's just that the cumulative effect of that in the future, when he looks back and says,